A combination vehicle is, is a vehicle that is two or more components, like a tractor and a trailer, or it could be a doubles, like a tractor and two trailers, or it can be triples, like a tractor and three trailers. Um, when you drive these combination vehicles, you want to drive them safely. And one of the biggest risks involved in a, uh, a combination vehicle is it has a high rollover factor because of the high center of gravity. Uh, the following two things will help uh, keep from rolling over. The one is to keep the cargo as close to the uh, ground as possible, and the other is to watch your speed. <coughs> Rollers happen when you turn too fast. Uh, remember that when you're out there driving, the uh, speed limit that you see on signs, on curves, uh, especially off ramps, are usually set for cars. So you want to come in a little bit slower when you go around that curve. You want to steer gently because if you jerk the wheel, uh, that movement is amplified all the way to the back of the trailer, especially on doubles. It's called the crack the whip effect. And this is caused because you have rearward amplification when you move that wheel. It, uh, it, what it does is amplify that movement. So you may only move the wheel uh, a quarter of a turn and it amplifies it back to where your trailer is whipping around. You want to brake early with a combination vehicle because you want to control your speed. Uh, you want to uh, not have to worry about uh, slamming into somebody or have to get on the brakes real hard. Remember, an empty trailer will take longer to stop than a full trailer because uh, you don't have the down pressure on the wheels and also that trailer may start hopping behind you when you emergency stop. Okay? Uh, bobtailing, that means running without a trailer. Uh, it makes it more difficult to stop because you have virtually no weight on the back of your uh, tractor. Okay, uh, a, uh, a triple trailer, for example, is 3.5 times more likely to roll over than probably a car in a curve. So you have to be really careful when you're driving. Uh, you'll be driving probably 53-footers uh, trailers with a uh, uh, tractor with a sleeper on it, that's about a 70 foot of vehicle, so you have to be aware uh, you can roll those over. And also on railroad highway crossings, if you're hauling, uh, if you're pulling a low slung trailer like a low boy or a cattle trailer, a possum trailer, something like that, it's going to uh, have the ability, uh, might have the ability to drag in high center and then you'll be in trouble. You have to call a wrecker. You want to prevent your trailer from skidding. Um, the, the best way to do it is to watch your speed and um, recognize the skid. The earliest way to recognize a skid, is, uh, the earliest way to recognize a trailer has started to skid is by seeing it in your mirrors. Uh, you always should be watching your mirrors, remember, every five to eight seconds. And you just, you glance at it and just keep your eyes moving back and forth uh, so you can see if it, something's out of place. You will see it if your trailer's coming around. If you see your trailer skidding, uh, what you want to do is get off the brakes and get that trailer back in line with your tractor. Uh, when also with these trailers, because they're so long, when they turn a corner, they turn wide. It's called off-tracking. If you look at figure 6-3 in your book, you'll see uh, what off-tracking means. Your trailer, when you turn, if you're turning right, your tractor will leave tracks like this, and your trailer will leave tracks like this. This is called off-tracking. At slow speed, your trailers turn inside your tractor uh, tracks. So you have to be careful when you're making right and left turns. You want to watch your mirrors as you come around to make sure your trailer is not going to strike another object. <coughs> so always turn wide. Remember, if you're turning right, uh, watch your right side carefully. Slow down, make the turn smooth. If you're turning left, Go to the center of the intersection before you initiate your turn. Uh, backing the trailer is one of the hardest things to do in this industry uh, because you, it's hard to see and you, it's, uh, everything is kind of backwards. Uh, so when you start backing your trailer, you want to make sure you're set up properly. You want to look at your path that you're going into. Make sure there's nothing back there to obstruct it. Uh, use your mirrors on both sides so you can see what that trailer is doing. Back slowly. There's no reason to be in a big hurry. Uh, correct your drift immediately. Um, when, you, when we talk about drift, that means that your trailer's moving to the left or the right as you're backing. 
Uh, you want to correct it as soon as it moves a little bit. You only should have to turn your steering wheel about a quarter to a half a turn to correct that drift. If your trailer is drifting to the left, you want to turn your steering wheel to the left to correct that because you want to move your trailer back to the right. And if it's moving to the right, you want to move your steering wheel to the right so it moves the trailer back to the left. Combination vehicle air brakes. Uh, we just covered the air brakes. Uh, you should always check your air brakes and connections between your tractor and your trailer on a combination to make sure they are working properly and they don't have any leaks. Inside, a, a lot of trucks have uh, trailer hand valves, sometimes called the trolley valve or the Johnson bar. Uh, this is there for one reason. It's to check your service brakes on your trailer. And that's all it's for. It's not for stopping or parking. Uh, and the way you check them is you start forward about five miles per hour and you pull the lever down and it should stop your vehicle. That's the only thing it's for. Okay? Uh, don't use it for anything else. Don't use it when you're going down the road. Your tractor protection valve we discussed back on the, on the uh, brake uh, uh, chapter and uh, that's activated when you uh, lose uh, air. You, uh, if your emergency airline brakes going back to your trailer, uh, it activates the tractor protection valve. That prevents the air from escaping from your tractor uh, so your brakes won't come on on your tractor. It also, when you pull uh, the red uh, air control knob uh, on your dash to set your trailer brakes, it allows your tractor to be able to pull out from underneath that trailer so you can drop that trailer. Your trailer air supply control is also uh, the uh, emergency brake button. It's a red button on your dash. You pull it out and that uh, supplies, uh, you push it in and it supplies air to the trailer. You pull it out to set your park brakes. Okay, trailer airlines, you have two. You've got a service airline, which is blue and looks like this. And you also have a red line, that's your emergency line, that supplies air to the trailer. At the end of each of your hoses coming off your tractor is a, is a device called a, a glad hand. And if you follow me over here, and this, these are glad hands. Uh, they fit together and you notice inside there's a rubber grommet or a seal. And you want to make sure these are intact, and not broken or split so you won't get any leaks when you put them together. And what you do when you put them together is you put them at a 90 degree angle and then twist them together. Oh, I'm sorry. Put them at a 90 degree angle and, and then twist them together. And they should snap right in. Just like that. You want to make sure that they are properly uh, connected and no leaks around them. Uh, if you see that the grommet is split, you just change the grommet. It's real quick to change. <coughs> trailers have air tanks and uh, they're there to supply air to the brakes because when you step on your brake pedal uh, it sends air through the service brake line which is the blue line back to the trailer and it goes to a relay valve this relay valve then tells the air tank how much air pressure to place on the brakes and they put this air for uh, uh, speed purposes. It actually activates the brakes faster with that setup. Okay, now sometimes you'll see uh, doubles. That's two trailers behind one tractor. <coughs> and triples. Um, they have shutoff valves on the back of the trailer. And only on trailers that can pull other trailers. So remember, you have a trailer, service, parking, and emergency brakes. Okay, they're all controlled by different things. Um, and you have to keep that straight in your mind that your trailer service brakes are controlled by um, the uh, trolley handle and the parking and emergency brakes are controlled by the red knob on your dash. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's revisit uh, anti-lock brake systems again. Trailers are required to have anti-lock brake systems if they've been manufactured after March 1st, 1998. And uh, you can tell if it's got one on your trailer because of, the, of a small amber light about that long on the left side of your trailer, either front or rear, within view of your rear view mirrors. When you brake with the ABS system on your, uh, on your rig, you brake like you normally brake. 
Uh, the ABS, ABS system is only for helping you control your vehicle so your wheels don't lock up. Okay, now let's talk about uh, on, on uh, um, um, combination vehicles, you're going to be coupling and uncoupling frequently. It's part of your job. You have to know how to do it safely and correctly so you don't hurt yourself or damage anything. Okay, so when you're getting ready to couple a tractor, uh, what you do is the first thing is you inspect the fifth wheel on the tractor. Okay? That's a wheel that sets over the uh, drive wheels on the tractor. You want to make sure that it's uh, mounted properly. No missing bolts, no cracks or breaks. Make sure that it has enough grease on it. Okay? Make sure that the, it's, uh, the fifth wheel is tilted down toward the rear of the tractor with the jaws open. Safety unlocking handle in the automatic lock position. Uh, if you have a sliding fifth wheel, make sure the locking pins are in place. Make sure the trailer kingpin is not bent or broken. And then you want to inspect the area around the tra trailer you're getting ready to hook up to. <coughs> Check the cargo if you can, if there's any in or if it's a flatbed on it. Uh, position the tractor so it's squared away with the front of your trailer. You want your tractor in line with your trailer before you back under it. Back slowly. Back until the fifth wheel touches, just touches the front of the trailer. And don't slam into it. Uh, check, get out and check your trailer height. Make sure that it's slightly below the fifth wheel pivot point. So when you back under it, it will raise the uh, trailer a little bit and take the pressure off the landing gear. Connect the airlines to the trailer. <coughs> Make sure you connect them correctly so you don't get them cross-connected. The blue service line should be the inside line and the red emergency line should be on the outside. Supply air to the trailer. Push the air supply knob in and uh, shut your engine off so you can hear the brakes. Okay? Apply the brakes. Make sure that you hear them coming on. Check the air brake system pressure gauge for signs of major air loss. You will see it dropping if you do have a bad leak. Okay? Lock the trailer brakes. Pull out the air supply knob and move the tractor protection valve control from normal to emergency. Uh, back under the trailer. Use the lowest reverse gear. Back your, trailer slowly un back your tractor slowly under the trailer to avoid hitting the kingpin too hard. Stop when the kingpin locks around that, or the jaws lock around the kingpin, and you'll hear it. You hear a distinctive click. Okay? If, it, if it's not in there right, it won't lock. You want to check the connection for security. Uh, raise your uh, landing gear just a little bit off the ground and then put your tractor in uh, low gear, set your trailer brakes and pull forward and you should feel resistance as you pull forward. Okay? Then secure your vehicle. Then get out and inspect the uh, connection. Take a flashlight with you. Crawl up under your trailer and look up uh, in the fifth wheel. Make sure the jaws are locked around the kingpin. Uh, check that the locking lever is in the lock position. Uh, check that the safety latch, if it has one, is in the position over the locking lever. Uh, if the coupling in is right, don't drive it. Okay. Make sure there. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, connect the electrical cord and check your air lines. Okay. Uh, plug your electrical cord into the trailer and fasten the safety catch on top of that uh, electrical cord so it can't work out. Make sure the air and electrical lines are, will not touch any part of the tractor. Raise the front uh, trailer supports or the landing gear all the way up. Store the uh, handle in the, its proper place. If there's no hook to hold it, you need to use a bungee cord. Um, remove the trailer wheel chocks and you're ready to go down the road. Okay. Now let's move on to uncoupling because uh, you're going to be uh, dropping a trailer. You want to take it off your tractor. Uh, these following steps should help you uncouple safely. First off, position your rig so that uh, your tractor is in line with your trailer and uh, ease the pressure on the locking jaw by um, pulling the emergency brake on your trailer. Pull slightly forward and set your trailer brakes. That will take the pressure off of it. Uh, chalk the trailer wheels if they don't have spring brakes. Uh, lower the landing gear. Lower it all the way to the ground until it firmly touches the ground. If you're heavily loaded, give an extra couple cranks in low uh, to uh, get the pressure off of the fifth wheel. Disconnect your airlines and electrical cables. 
Okay. Make sure the lines are, and hook them to the dummy uh, supports on the back of your cab. Make sure the lines aren't touching anything or get into the drive shaft or hanging down. Unlock the fifth wheel. Just reach under and pull the release handle to the open position. And, and when you're doing this, uh, keep your legs and feet clear of that because that, that tractor may roll back and run over your foot. Pull your tractor partially clear of the trailer, but you want to keep a little bit of the fifth wheel in the frame underneath that trailer. Then you want to get out and uh, check the um, uh, ground support uh, under your uh, landing gears and make sure they're not sinking into the ground or collapsing on their own. Uh, then you uh, pull the tractor, clear the trailer, and you're, you're done. You're ready to hook up to a new trailer. Um, when you inspect a combination trailer, uh, use your, use your pre-trip inspection, seven-step inspection that we'll go over uh, on the pre-trip inspection. Uh, but there's a couple other things you want to check. Uh, check your fifth wheel, the lower fifth wheel, securely mounted to the frame, no missing or damaged parts, and enough grease on that wheel because you want to make sure that when you turn a corner that trailer uh, slides on that fifth wheel. Uh, locking jaws around the shank of the kingpin and release arm is properly seated. Check the fifth wheel, uh, check the uh, apron on the trailer, make sure it's not bent and uh, the kingpin is not damaged. Check your air and electrical lines, make sure they're properly uh, mounted and secured and there's no leaks. Um, and free of damage. Check your sliding fifth wheel if you have it. Make sure the pins are in locked position and if, if it's a air operated one make sure the air cylinder is properly mounted and secured and the airline coming in is not damaged and it has no leaks. Okay, And all your locking play, uh, pins are present and locked in place. Uh, your landing gear must be fully raised, no missing parts, not bent or otherwise damaged, your crank handle in place. Uh, the other thing you want to check is the clearance behind the frame of your tractor and the landing gear on your trailer. If your, if your uh, fifth wheel is slid too far forward, it could strike it when you turn the corner. Also check the distance behind your cab and the front of your trailer to make sure it's not going to strike when you turn the corner. Okay. To do a uh, combination vehicle brake check, um, the following section, uh, the, 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 uh, I'm sorry. Do a combination vehicle brake check. Okay, check that air flows to all trailers if you're pulling doubles or triples. And you remember the uh, uh, air valves are on the back of trailers you can pull out of the trailer. So if you have a double, you want to make sure that uh, your air is flowing to the back trailer also. So you go to the back of the trailer, open the uh, valves up, and if you have air coming out, then you've got air all through the trailer system. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, that uh, you test your trailer emergency brakes, pull out the red knob, uh, put it in low gear and pull forward, you feel resistance. And to test the trailer service brakes, you roll forward at five miles per hour, pull your trolley handle down and it should stop your rig. And that concludes the combination uh, section of the book.